Welcome back, all you happy fish hookers. Here we go with Captain Matt. We're going to show you how to easily update your Garmin chart plotter uh, software from your home. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some items here, the bail mount and power cable that I purchased off the uh, Garmin online. You're going to need some tools uh, to help make this happen. You're going to need a couple other components. Uh, the 6-in-1 screwdriver and a uh, pair of needle nose pliers is primary. You're going to need yourself a 12 volt battery. This is a little lithium ion battery that I use for running my chart plotter. And more importantly, you're going to need these little alligator clips, these little copper alligator clips. These dudes are going to uh, help you make connection to the battery and make all the magic happen. So, one of the last things you want to have happen is uh, sit there at the uh, at the boat ramp and try to update your software. It gets real challenging and everything like that. We don't want that to happen. So, we're going to make an easy way so you do, you can do this at home. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take your power cable and you're going to obviously unwrap it. I mean. Kind of difficult to do it with it in the wrapper. You'll want to find the uh, black and the red cables. Now I have a soldering iron over there and uh, some tin and flux and whatnot. And if these wires weren't previously tinned, I would have had to uh, heat them up and tin them. However, Garmin was kind enough to send me a cable that already had uh, the ends tinned that I needed. That little yellow thing there, that's an inline fuse. You'll want to make sure that stays in line. Now these two little wires right here, uh, those are old NEMA cables. Uh, I don't need them, so we're just going to go ahead and knock, knock those dudes off. Snip and done. Throw them away. You don't need them. You need the red and the black wire only. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our alligator clips. Now it doesn't matter, uh, polarity on these things doesn't matter. One clip per cable, uh, that's all that really matters. You'll see that there's uh, there a little spring-loaded clip, there's a little screw that you're going to attach the wire to, and then you got some strain relief tags on the end. Rawr, 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 alligator clips, good stuff. So you take your 6-in-1, your little screwdriver there, and you're going to back that, uh, back that screw out. That's me showing off how handy a 6-in-1 screwdriver is. If you don't have one, get you one. It's real good. So you're going to back that screw out. Now here I, in, I intentionally make a little bit of a foul up, of course, to, uh, to show you what not to do, and that is to back it out completely. Grab your set of needle nose pliers and we're gonna we're gonna twist over the end of this wire. So I'm gonna take these pliers, gently grab the tip, and I'm going to roll it over so that it forms a little J. And why that's important is because that's gonna um, hook onto the post of the screw. And here you see I didn't back that screw out far enough uh, in order to easily make that happen. So I'm gonna have to go back and back that screw out just a little bit more. Now that post is very accessible and here you'll see I'm gonna just slip that little J right over the post. I'm gonna lay the wire into those little uh, little strain relief tags and now I'm just gonna screw it down. You want to make sure when you screw that down that you get her good and tight. There you go. Right on. Put a little stank on it. Now I'm going to fold these little tag tags over, and what that's going to provide for me is really good strain relief on either one of those wires. So I gently kind of fold them over to make sure I get them positioned um, as well as I need them to be. So I get the first one crimped down. Now we're going to take the other one and fold it over and kind of, again, put a little stank on that and make sure you got a good solid connection. So now you got your positive wire uh, or your red wire. Now we're just going to repeat the process on the uh, on the negative lead. Again, back that screw all the way out.
grab your pliers and make that little J hook on the end of that wire. Just gently fold it over. Now you're just going to do the exact same thing. You're going to hook that onto the post of that screw. Make sure you've got uh, the wire through those little little tags, that little channel right there, and you're going to nail that down. And then you're going to want to fold those little tabs over to lock that into place. That is specifically for strain relief. So when you go moving these guys around, you're not bending the wire uh, that's actually attached to the screw. You're actually um, bending the wire that's inside the, the, that solid casing. And that provides you some strain relief and that prevents you from uh, putting unnecessary uh, bending on that wire so that it doesn't uh, prematurely break. So we roll those over, crimp them down real good, and now you got a good tight connection with good strain relief and now we're going to uh, move on to the next process here. Power cord's done. Good to go. Next we're going to take your power mount. We're going to unbox this dude. One of the things uh, it does come with is the mounting hardware, but we're not going to need that. But it's always nice to have good stainless uh, screws and washers. Get rid of the box. We're going to get rid of the bubble wrap. Little foam protective wrapper there. Get rid of that dude. Have it here. And then from here, we're just going to access the back. Now, you'll see the power cable uh, port there. We're just going to uh, get this all in position. You're going to take your power cable. You're going to take the plug end, and you're just going to make sure that you match it up with the back of the bail mount. There's a little key slot right there that shows you where to orient it with the plug. You know, match up the notch with the notch. Put that dude in there and nail it down. Make sure you got you a good solid connection. All right, the next step is pulling off the little protective covers. And then you're going to grab your head unit and you're going to slap her on. All right, so now that you got your dirty little Garmin unit plugged into your bail mount, you're going to make sure you want to take your battery. You want to connect the red wire to the red lead. You want the black wire to the black lead or the negative lead. So you, you always connect the negative to negative, red to positive, red to red, black to black, and fire it up. Here we go. Look at that. Right in the old garage there. I got the Garmin unit all fired up. So what's next? Well, now we got to go ahead and we got to grab our phone. We're going to go ahead to our Bluetooth settings. We're going to go to our Wi-Fi settings, actually. And we're going to look for the Wi-Fi that you have set up. So there's mine, Captain Matt Weber. We go ahead and make sure it pairs up. There you go. Check mark. Now we're good to go. Now we can do all the rest of the magic here. Go to your active captain, sync devices, and from here it's pretty pretty basic. I mean this is your this is your standard process. You're just using a different power source from the comfort of your own home to be able to make all your updates, software updates, you're going to be able to do your active captain updates and upload or download your quick draw contours, which is really cool. So here you'll see I'm, I'm paired up, I'm connected, here's Active Captain. Looks like we got a bunch of green check marks, that's awesome. And from here you pretty much know what to do, uh, but we're going to double check and verify and make sure that everything's rock and roll. 
Look at that, preparing to transfer the software. That's good. That means we've got connectivity happening. Good connection. Oh, look at that, transferring. Active Cat from Community is rocking and rolling. So here we are. Uh, we are fully operational right in the comfort of our own home. Uh, no boat required. So this is a very easy, uncomplicated way to update your software uh, without needing to go to the marina or go to your boat to get her done. So congratulations. I hope this helps. And at the end of the day, I hope you have another fine day full of fun and adventure.